Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Logic Ops Lab. So today we are going to talk about process and logging. So what exactly is a process? So processes are the related activities inside a system that works together to do something. So basically there is always something that is happening inside your system and they are there for a definite purpose. They are doing some kind of task, some kind of function. So all that all of that are known as processes. Now what is logging? So let us understand by what is a log file. So a log file is a file that records either events that occur in an operating system or when a software runs or messages exchanged between different users of the communication software. So this act of keeping a log is known as logging. So we are going to try these four things today. First of all, we will get the list of the task or the processes and we'll, in the second one, we'll try to log it into a text file. That would be an example of logging. In the third, we'll be uh, killing a process, killing a task. Or in the fourth one, we'll be starting a new process. So let's move on to the demo, guys. So as you can see on my screen, I have written all the things that we are going to try today in just one file and have named it operations. So what we are going to talk about today, first is the task list. So what does it show? To get the list of all the running processes, we run this task list. So what we can do it, we can just copy it over here. We're not running this whole file because there are a lot of commands over here and we don't, we do not want to run everything at once. So we'll do one by one. And you can see all the tasks that are happening right now that are getting, that are running right now in this operating system has been placed over here. So this is a whole long list. If you can see how many processes are going on. So what exactly is this? So this is the memory usage that, that is happening over here. What is the type? It is a service. What is the PID? PID is the process ID. We'll be needing it afterwards. You can see this is system, this is the mesh name, this is PID, this is session name, this is session number, and this is the memory usage. So it, we can call it mem usage as well. Okay. I will just go down and just clean it, CLS. What we'll do, we'll try to log it. And we'll try to log it in the file known as processes. Now you can see onto my left side that there is no text file. But once we run it, all these processes will come into this text file. So let's just copy this and paste it over here. And let's run it. You can see that it has run successfully and there is a new file over here and it has all that data which we saw earlier in a text file. It comes pretty handy when you have to send it to someone. It can be a part of your uh, data uh, pipeline or something where it has to be generated and it can be sent to developers or QA people or anyone. So that's how you log it. Now what we'll do is We'll try to just uh, modify this and we'll try to get the list of all those processes whose memory has been used, uh, who are using memory more than 50,000. Okay. Now, I've named a file which is processes gt is greater than 50,000.txt. This is the Angular bracket which is going to convert it into a text file. Right now, there is no file over here, right? Here, this this is a syntax in which task list has to be there and slash fi displays the set of tasks that match a given criteria. What, I, what is the given criteria over here? This is the given criteria. Now let's just run it. I'll just copy this. Just paste it over here and hit enter. You can see there is a new text file over here. Let's open it and you can see only those, uh, those processes have been listed over here which are using more than 50,000K, you can see. And that's how it works, guys. Pretty interesting, right? Let's just close this. Had it been a case where I haven't put this, it would have shown it over here. So that's, that's not uh, a big deal. Now what we'll do, we'll kill a process. But right now, what we are trying to do here is, we are killing a process which is not already opened. So let's just open it first and then run it. Okay. 
So in order to open it, we have to start a new process. And this is the syntax. You have to start with a start keyword. You can give a title or something, a path, options, command, and a parameters. I'll be talking about the basic one. So I'll just start a notepad.exe. I'll just copy this. I'm not using whole of it. If I use whole of it, then there will be a text file and it will ask me that whether you have to create a text file or not. Let's just open this. Copy, right click, hit enter. And you can see there is a notepad file that is here. Now, if I just move it over here and I go over here, I can see that I can kill a process. All I have to do is I have to use this task skill slash f i slash im and name of my exe file. What was the name of my exe file? Notepad.exe. So what I can do is I can just copy this and run it. Now let me go out of full screen. You can see there is a notepad file running over here. Now what we'll do is I'll just put it over here and hit enter and just make sure you are looking over here. And you can see that the notepad the PID this has been terminated and it has gone away from here. Why did it go? Because I have killed the process through this. So now we know how do we see, how do we start a process and how do we kill a process. Had it been other case, let me start this by giving a name over here. So it will start a file and it will ask us there is no such file. Do you want me to create this? Yes. Right click, paste, hit enter. If you want to see a better view, you can just do it like this. Now it's better, hit enter. And you can see, cannot find notepad file.txt. Do you want to create a new file? Yes, we want to create a new file. And thus, your new file has been created just by the command of it. If I move it over here, you can see the file is here now. So that's how it works, guys. So I think you guys have understood. And if you haven't understood anything, please feel free to drop your comments below and we'll address. So this course is complete here. And I have taken all the basic thing that has to be considered for a basic batch scripting course. In the next video, we'll talk about some interview questions which can be asked in terms of batch scripting. So thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video.